Subhash, I've been obsessed with consciousness my entire life, and I've studied it from really two perspectives. One is neuroscience. Second is a Judeo-Christian background, largely in analytical philosophy. I know the Vedic traditions and Vedic philosophy is very rich uh, in its understanding of consciousness. Uh, help me understand what in the Vedic traditions uh, could help us in the modern world in understanding consciousness? According to the Vedic view, the ground stuff of reality is consciousness. And this consciousness projects itself and gets embodied in the physical world. And there are these connections between this ground stuff and its embodiment in diverse forms. Now, according to this view, there is also a binding, so to speak, between the individual self, just like you and me, who are observing reality outside of our senses, and the entire cosmos. And this is uh, captured in the Vedic uh, slogan, uh, this Atman is Brahman, or I am Atma Brahma in Sanskrit. And Schrodinger, one of the creators of uh, quantum mechanics, credits this slogan uh, to having taken him to the discovery that uh, a state function uh, of a physical object should be described as a superposition of all possibilities. D define for me Atman and Brahman in that context, so I understand why one is the other. Atman is the individual self and Brahman is the cosmos. And there is this paradoxical um, equivalence which is postulated in the Vedic text that Atman is equal to Brahman. Now, what, it could, what could it mean? Because this doesn't seem rational at all. The image that is presented in order to explain that is to speak of the sun and the reflection of the sun in a million different pots with water. Now, the sun's image will be seen in the water in each one of those pots, but there's only one sun. And therefore, what it uh, compels us to uh, believe in or accept is that there is a single sun of consciousness which transcends the entire reality or which interpenetrates the entire reality. And the individual consciousness that each one of us possesses is like the reflection of that sun in a pot of light. And it's that reflection which gives us the capacity to comprehend the entire cosmos. And it's that reflection which also within itself defines certain capacities and possibilities which makes knowing possible. Because without this, if we were all dis disconnected particles of materiality floating around in the universe, there's no reason why any accumulation or, or aggregation of these particles, let's say inside the brain, should have given us the capacity to understand the cosmos. Certainly, both the uh, existence of consciousness itself and the incredible capacity, certainly of humans to understand the cosmos, is, is a deep mystery and, and, and a deep reality of this world, for sure. Uh, whether one has to go to such extreme positions of a cosmic consciousness that we're all part of, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a particular view. Right. And uh, as a scientist today, you feel that that Vedic uh, philosophical tradition gives us a legitimate insight for understanding consciousness. This uh, Vedic philosophical position informed the understanding of Schrodinger, one of the creators of quantum mechanics, and therefore it has already played a very significant role in uh, the understanding that we possess at this time of uh, what reality is. Uh, now, there are other aspects to the work of consciousness which possibly might still uh, become understandable if one were to use this uh, starting point. Mm. And uh, here what I refer to are things such as uh, uncommon um, understanding or knowledge. Uh, or capacities that different people possess, or how creative people seem to come by their discoveries. Uh, but uh, more than a hundred years ago, um, in the late uh, 19th century, 
the uh, French mathematician uh, Jacques Hadamard wrote to a lot of his uh, leading colleagues across the world, um, creative people, scientists, and asked them how is it that they had come by their discoveries. And most of them wrote back saying that they had come by their discoveries not by inductive thought, not by extending what was already known, but in a moment of, in a kind of a flash where it seemed to have come from nowhere. You call it a half phenomena. A, a half phenomena, <laughs> like uh, Eureka, yeah. and uh, like uh, a moment, uh, an epiphany, where you seem to break with the knowledge that you possessed in the past. And I think this all seems to be consistent with the, with the Vedic view that our ordinary uh, experience of ourselves is through associational knowledge, through our classical mind, through our memories and information that we have. But then from time to time, we seem to break through to something deeper, which connects us to the entire world, so to speak. And it's at those moments that we come by uh, extraordinary uh, knowledge. Can those moments be enhanced through the yoga experience and what yogas do in their, um, uh, in their practice, their meditation? Do they get, as they claim, down to this fundamental ground of being on a more regular basis than ordinary people like me? Yeah, the claim is that uh, this is what yoga is all about. Yoga is a union with this transcendent self that resides within each one of us. And uh, if one can hold on to this connection, then one would have access to uncommon knowledge. 